All right, all right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to today's webinar. My name is Kyle Groves. I am an EIT and a senior technical specialist here with ATG USA, your technology partner. Today is July 8th, 2021. I've got my email below, and I'll also present that at the end. Uh, feel free to send me an email if you have any questions and uh, also on other webinar content that you might like to see. With that, let's go ahead and get started. So a little bit about me. Uh, I'm based out of the Twin Cities, Minnesota, our ATG North office, as we like to call it. Um, I'm a civil 3D certified professional, Autodesk certified instructor, and I do also have my engineer in training certification. Uh, with my Autodesk expertise, I do a lot with AutoCAD, civil 3D, a little bit of storm and sanitary analysis, as well as InfraWorks. So uh, what we're here to talk about today are all things layers. So as we're going to go through and talk about that, we'll do a real quick review of our template basics. We'll talk about where layers are used inside of Civil 3D. We'll talk about the difference between a Civil 3D style and a good old fashioned AutoCAD layer. And then at the end, we're gonna go through some of the different ways that we can manage this a little bit more intelligently using the SIM manager suite from CTC software. The short answer there is that we're gonna be able to take advantage of spreadsheets and we're also gonna get much better mapping into uh, what our templates are doing as far as referencing various styles between various layers. But never fear, we'll get through how to do all of that with the out of the box methods. Uh, so no purchase is required. Uh, that's just kind of a little bonus for making that work go faster for you. And also as a note, this is gonna be pretty CAD manager heavy. Though if you were ever wondering why do things show up the way that they do inside my template as just more of a user perspective, uh, this is definitely gonna be some great information for you uh, for using the software more effectively at your organization. So what goes into a Civil 3D template? Well, Civil 3D is built on top of the base AutoCAD software. So it's an AutoCAD vertical product, just like Map 3D, AutoCAD Architecture, AutoCAD MVP, so on and so forth. And with that, we've got all of our good old fashioned uh, drawing units. We've got blocks, drawing scales, line types, basically everything that we would find inside of our design center palette is going to be an AutoCAD based template setting. And of course, uh, as we're talking about with today's webinar, that's also going to include your layers. As far as Civil 3D is concerned, we add a little bit more on top of that for what goes into our template. We have these things called styles. We have different styles for our objects. We'll find those in the display tab of a style setting. And we have our label styles uh, that are, we're gonna find layer assignment within the general tab of those label styles. So anything that is an alignment, a surface, a profile, all of those objects are gonna have kind of a similar set of how things are set up for the way they look, the way they function. And then our labels, spot elevations, alignment cur curve labels, um, lot line labels, all that stuff. Uh, those are all set up pretty similarly and uh, are gonna function in a common way. Other than our styles, we've got our civil 3D drawing settings. Uh, in that, we're gonna be taking a look at our object layers, as well as the units and zone. You know, part of the reason why civil 3D is so popular and uh, a lot better than just a basic AutoCAD platform is the fact that we can coordinate it in the real world. Because um, eventually someone's gonna have to go out and find this stuff and build it in the right spot. Last thing that goes into our Civil 3D templates from a major perspective are those various command settings. So when I create a surface, which style am I going to be using? Do I want a maximum triangle length? So on and so forth. Today, though, we're not going to cover all of that. We're here to talk about our layers. So our primary uh, places where we're going to focus on are just how do we build layers? How do we build styles? And um, or rather not how to build a style, but where our layers come into play with our styles, and then what these drawing settings for our object layers do to impact our model. So with that, now we get to talk about our civil 3D styles. Also gonna be a little bit different format than usual if you've seen some of my other webinars. Uh, we're gonna be bouncing in and out of PowerPoint today, uh, whereas typically I do everything in PowerPoint, then we run in through a single demo. So. With that, I guess, let's just go ahead and take a look at where we'd find all this content within our template. 
So I'm going to pop open Civil 3D. Uh, I've got a really straightforward uh, gas station project. Uh, we've got our building, our pad, our fill area, uh, some streets running in and out, all those curb islands and the rest of that stuff. So I've got this with my proper survey file. I've got my XREF that I have removed my Civil 3D data from. And then I've got a proposed file where I could come in and build pipe networks, alignments, grading, all that kind of stuff. So with our templates, I mentioned um, all of our AutoCAD basic information is gonna be what we can find in Design Center. Uh, that's one of our palettes we can find from the Home tab, palettes, and it's in here somewhere, Design Center. So anything that we see in this list is going to be AutoCAD in nature because this is an AutoCAD palette. Um, so all of our blocks, dimension styles, annotation styles, text, multi-leaders, tables, layouts, and then layers, which is our key stuff. So what is a layer, you might be asking? Well, a layer is simply a, a organization that we can use to store specific information. So if I were to come into my existing, uh, just my XREF file, and go to my layer property manager, I could see I've got all of these different things in here. Um, now, we're not gonna talk about how to name your layers or what's, uh, what standards you should follow for that. So right now, I'm just gonna make my GANO layer active and I'm gonna draw a polyline. Because that layer is active, when I create that piece of geometry, sorry, that's not a great color for this. Let me make that magenta so that it pops a little bit better. But when I create that object, now it exists in my drawing, but it exists on a certain layer with all of its other companions. So I can do things like turn a layer off, which is more of a general visibility, um, more of a temporary basis, or I can freeze that layer, which is going to also make it go away from a data perspective. So if I turn that layer off, my line work goes away. If I freeze, that layer, well, I can't do that because my layer is current. That layer is current. Now, if I try to freeze that layer, it also goes away. There's some other data considerations with it. But other things that we can control with a layer are visual display color. Also, if you're using color-based plotting, that affects how it will plot. Uh, or if you're using style-based plotting, you can assign a unique plot style based off of that. So my general annotation, it's gonna be very fine with a 0.25 line weight. But I can also set my line type and I can tell a layer whether or not it's going to plot. So this is really important inf information for organizing our drawing contents. We wanna make sure that our proposed information lives on a civil based layer. Any of our existing survey information lives on a survey based layer um, and all kinds of other settings that go into that. But in a nutshell, that's what we have with layers. They're opportunities to change how things look, whether or not we can see them, and their plotting behavior. So with that primer underway, let's talk a little bit now about our Civil 3D styles. So what is a Civil 3D style? A Civil 3D style controls how things look inside of our software. So um, when we create that Civil 3D object, we can create a surface, we can create an alignment, a pipe network, whatever. It's going to live on that, sit on that AutoCAD layer. So if I pop back into my drawing, I'll notice that my existing surface lives on a layer called C-10-EG. I'm checking that for my properties palette. So theoretically, that's the only place where I should go to control the look of my data, right? Not quite. Our Civil 3D styles actually control a lot more of that information. And what we're looking at specifically is our display tab within that style. So in there, you're going to see some light bulbs, and that's ultimately whether or not you can see that particular element of our of our Civil 3D object. Uh, no matter whether a layer that's assigned to that element is frozen or thawed, if that light bulb is not turned on, we are not going to be able to see that element. So that's our first key thing. But we also have a chance to assign a layer to a particular element. So as we'll see here in a few minutes, our surfaces aren't just the surface, we have major contours, we have minor contours, triangles, all those different analyses, and each one of those has its own unique display control, as well as layer assignment. So our layer can also 
um, be different than our entire objects. So we'll see that with our contours, how we can manipulate those layers that they're displaying on versus the surface itself. Um, if we are in that display tab, we do have an opportunity to define something as by block rather than by layer. If we do that, it's going to allow us to go through our properties and override them uh, through a properties dialog. Also, we're going to talk about this concept of layer zero. And uh, this is a key thread throughout both AutoCAD and Civil 3D. But when we assign something to layer zero, it doesn't actually mean that we're drafting on layer zero. If I go to that layer zero and I make it um, and I isolate it or whatever, um, the object's not going to live there. What it really means when we say layer zero is it's a placeholder rule that allows your objects to look somewhere else for another rule. If it finds that other rule, it'll apply it, so it will assign it to some other layer. Or uh, if no other rules exist, then yes, eventually it will end up on layer zero. So what does this look like inside the software? Let's go check it out. Let's go take a look at that surface. So I mentioned uh, I'm here in my survey base file with all of my civil 3D data. I have a surface that lives on the layer C-10-EG. However, if I go in to my style of this surface, I can get there to edit my style via my right-click menu, or whenever I click on something in civil 3D, my ribbon should change. I call this, the software calls this the contextual ribbon. If I fly out my surface properties and go to edit that surface style is showing up on this other monitor here. But here in my template, I've got all kinds of different things set to show up here. Right now, I've got my display tab. And this is the thing that's common for all of our civil 3D object styles, is we're always going to have this display tab. Surfaces have contours and points and such. Alignments don't. Section lines don't. But everything has the display tab. So because I can see my border, I can only see that because my light bulb is turned on and it's going to live on a layer C dash tin dash boundary. My major and my minor contours, whatever interval they might be, those are going to display and they're going to show up on a particular layer. In this case, major existing, minor existing. So let's take a look at just what happens when I try and play around with some of these different layers. If I go into my layer manager, uh, I can go find C-10-EG, and I will freeze that layer. Because the entire object of my surface does have to live on one layer, if I freeze the layer that the surface lives on, I'm freezing everything underneath it. The object itself has been told to go away. However, as long as the layer that's hosting that data that surface. Actually, real quick, folks, uh, I'm going to change my screen color here because this is not popping very well. And I don't think line weights are going to get us far enough. So do, 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 do. just go with a straight white background. That should be better. And I will turn my line weights on. That's not going to make a difference. So here are the contours, my dash contours for my existing surface. Those are gone. But my style said, hey, you know what? We've actually got uh, some other assignments in here. So if I come in and I freeze my layer that my major or my minor annotation were set to, I'm just going to control select, control select to get both of those. Oh, those were the annotations. Didn't want those. I wanted the actual contour layers. We could see that those just went away. However, my border was turned on with the light bulb inside the display tab of my Civil 3D object style. So I can still select the object of my surface, and I can still see that. If I wanted to turn off my border too, I could. There's my C10 boundary. And then now, all of the component layers are turned off. It's going to be really hard for me to select that unless I go into my prospector, I choose my surfaces, and I right click to select the surface directly. Now, my properties is telling me that I can uh, that I have it selected, but I really don't see anything in my drawing uh, giving me that indication. So our display tab is really important when we're talking about our civil 3D object styles because we are only allowed to see 
objects that have a light bulb. And then if we take an individual element, just my border, just my minor contours, we can assign those to a specific layer. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take this one farther and I'm gonna come through and we're gonna change all of our layers to layer zero that are not our border or our major contours. And this is gonna give us a really interesting kind of look at some weird things at first glance that go on inside Civil 3D. So I've got all these other things assigned to layer zero. I'm gonna take my triangles and I'm gonna turn them on. Now I can see that they're showing up inside of my drawing. Uh, tin surface, T-I-N stands for triangulated irregular network. So uh, basically it's just a bunch of straight lines that connect other X, Y, Z points. That's how we get our contours. Notice that our contours only bend when they cross our tin lines. Uh, so our contours are definitely the results of our surface. They are not inputs. Um, break lines and points define our actual surface. But I have the C tin EG stuff going on here. And those triangles are now showing up as uh, that blue color. If I check my surface style, I can see that the color of those triangles is set to be by layer. Well, what layer is controlling this if it's layer zero? Well, let me check. Let's go to our layer property manager where I can attempt to freeze layer zero, assuming that it is not the current. You can't freeze a current layer. So I'll change my current CA building site. And I'll try and freeze layer zero. Well, that's frozen and these lines are still showing up. So those objects don't really live on layer zero. Where do they live? Well, they actually live on the layer that the object is hosted on. So if I freeze it, it's gonna go away and that's not gonna be a very compelling example. But if I go find my tin stuff and I go find my layer that my surface is living on, right now it's set to blue, I'll change the color. to red, drawing updates. Let me set this to stop auto hiding. Red, it changes. Magenta also changes. Green, whatever color I set that to, that's what's gonna push through and to how I'm looking at stuff in my drawing. Uh, if I can even change the line type, that was set to bilayer as well in there. Let me give that a nice uh, sanitary, one by two line type. Wow, I've got so many sanitary objects inside my drawing. Not quite. Um, but that's what layer zero means when we're using it inside of our style is it's going to look for something else. And generally with our civil 3D object styles and our civil 3D label styles that something else is the layer that the object itself lives on. So that's a key thing. And it will come into play when we test out some of these other uh, talking points for today. So overall, that's how our civil 3D styles work. If it's an object style, we have the display tab of our object styles. If it is a label style, we have another place that we can set that. We'll see that in a few minutes. So we know what a layer is. Layer is a place that we can organize information. We can make it look different. We can make it behave different. We can make it go away. A style has an opportunity to control multiple different elements, but we still get to treat it as one object. So our major contours were one element of our surface, our minor contours were another element. If I freeze the entire style, or if I have all of those light bulbs turned off, that's how we can control the display of those elements. So what that tells us is that styles are more powerful than layers. So with one style, I can control many different elements inside my drawing. So generally speaking, that's gonna tell us that we want to use styles to control our display where it's appropriate. And those styles are used to change the appearance of that object and of its subcomponents. However, sometimes we wanna turn off objects in our drawing. If we are doing a uh, grading plan, we don't need all of our utility information. Likewise, if we're doing our utility information, we don't need all of those contours. They don't need to be as bright or as bold um, or as annotated on the surface itself. So when we wanna turn off objects for AutoCAD objects, hatching, line work, um, any of that type of stuff, or if it's a, civil, a simple civil 3D object, something like a feature 
pardon me, a feature line or perhaps a pipe network uh, pipe. Um, we're going to want to use our layers to freeze them or to turn them off to control that display. And if we have a complex object, something like a surface, an alignment, a corridor that has many, many, many different elements that we don't want to manage by layers, then what we're going to want to do is we're going to define a no display style for those objects. And effectively, all that is, is it just goes into the display tab and we're turning off all of those uh, light bulbs so that we can't see it anymore. So just to check that out one more time, let's go into our existing drawing, get my layer manager out of the way here. And I will use my properties palette to check out what my styles exist in here. And we'll see that I have one that's called no display. Um, also really like to throw either an underscore or a, a letter Z in there just to get it alphabetically sorted so that it shows up at a particular spot in the list. But if I go to edit my surface style, my no display just has everything set to um, the light bulbs turned off. And note too that when we're talking about our civil 3D object settings, we do want to keep uh, pay attention to this view direction dropdown uh, because we can set these things up differently, whether it's in plan view, model view, that's your object viewer or anything isometric or not planned down or not uh, straight up above your model. And then section, if we're showing up in the section view, there's also profile for certain objects like pipe networks or profiles. Um, so those can all be different. Uh, these are all independent of the other different view directions. So your no display style should have all of your light bulbs turned off in all of these different directions. Um, and now with that no display, I can't see it. If I wanna get it back um, and it's set to no display, then I want to come over to my tool space prospector. I'll go find my collection of whatever, whatever it is I'm looking for. If I select the top level of this surface collection, it's actually gonna show me all of the surfaces in my drawing and I can change the style from here. We'll just give that the tinin style. Or if I uh, right click on my object from this collection view and prospector, I can also go through to select the object whereby I can get to its properties or to my properties palette to go through and make that change. If, however, I wanted to get rid of all of my cocoa points, I've got a couple of options in there. There's a civil 3D method for this. Let me get my surface back to something unobtrusive. Uh, my basic option that I have is I go check this uh, object. I see that it's on the vnode bituminous layer. I go into my layer property manager. new buttons. Uh, search. So in your layer property manager, there's a lot of cool stuff that I won't get to all today. But in your top right corner, there's a little search bar here. Um, if you have an asterisk on both sides of your word, it'll pick up anything with your search query in it. So if I'm searching for asterisk node asterisk, all I get are layers that contain the letters N-O-D-E in order. So if I come in and I find my bituminous, I can just freeze that. And once I do, those red um, points go away in my drawing. If I thaw back out, they show back up. So that's how we can take care of the simple objects, polylines, hatches, all the rest of that stuff. We'll just freeze the layer. Complex AutoCAD or complex civil 3D objects will want that no display style defined within our template so we can turn it to that if necessary. Now, why would we want to use an actual hard-coded layer inside of a style? So let's go back to our example of our civil 3D surface. So my major contour has its own layer assignment. My minor contour has the same. In fact, most of these, all of these do in my plan view direction. Well, I'm gonna want to assign a layer inside my style, generally speaking, for three different situations. I'm gonna wanna do that when I need independent layer control. So there's times when I won't want to see my major contours or my minor contours, or maybe I don't wanna see those two, but I wanna see everything else. Um, we've got a layer assigned to it. We can easily find that in our template in our layer manager. If we need to control this stuff via XREF, now 
um, since 2017, we really haven't had to worry about XREFing most of our civil 3D objects because we can now data reference a corridor. But if you want to be able to go through and run your layer freeze button and select an object in, at, uh, in that XREF drawing, if it's civil 3D, you're going to need that on its own layer in order to freeze that. Or you'll have to go through and do your hunting through your layer property manager to get that done. The last reason why we would want to use a layer within our style is if we're running the export to AutoCAD function, that is a really big fancy explode command that gets it back down into AutoCAD lines, polylines, blocks, hatches, et cetera, M text for any labels. After we explode stuff, it's gonna hold on to whatever layer it was set to. So if you have your contours set to layer zero and then you export your drawing out to AutoCAD, they're gonna show up on layer zero and your majors and your minors and everything else that's set to layer zero, you're not gonna to have to, you're not gonna have an ability to quickly sort those out. And the uh, second law of thermodynamics tells us we don't wanna mix two things that we eventually wanna separate out layer. So let's just get ahead of it and keep those layers assigned within the style. So those are kind of our three main reasons why we do want layers in the styles. Otherwise, generally, a pretty great idea to leave that style set to layer zero. So uh, if you have any more questions on that or questions on anything at all for today's presentation, definitely throw those into the chat window or into the question and answer window. Uh, and if you're feeling shy or if you wanna ask me something that's a little bit more off topic, definitely send me an email. I'll have that up at the end of the presentation. So with our civil 3D, object layers. When I created my draw, my uh, surface inside of Civil 3D, how did it know to just automatically go to the surface or to the layer C-10-EG? Well, it knew how to do this because of our Civil 3D object layers. We'll find this inside of our drawing settings on the object layers tab. And what we're going to see here are kind of three main things. First, we have an opportunity to assign a layer to a particular civil 3D object. Second, we have, I guess this is in backwards order here, but we have an opportunity to add a prefix to that base layer or a suffix to that base layer. And if we use an asterisk to describe what that prefix or suffix might be, it means that our object name is going to be used in addition uh, to, or it's gonna be incorporated in that layer name. And we're gonna make a copy of whatever that base layer is. So we go back into Civil 3D and show you what the heck that all means. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna be in my proposed drawing because I've played around with my existing one enough. So I said, hey, it's in our drawing settings. How do we get to our drawing settings? Well, in that case, you're gonna to wanna to be in your tool space, but you're also gonna to wanna to have your settings tab turned on. Uh, this is where we can go through and where we can see all of our object styles, all of our label styles. Uh, this is organized by group. But if we go to our drawing itself, basically the top level of that collection, we can right click on it and go to edit our drawing settings. Uh, the other way that you can get here if you like to use your application menu is uh, click on your big blue A or your big blue C, depending on what version you're in. You go to drawing utilities and then you'll find your drawing settings. It's the same dialogue. Uh, this is really, this is the place where we get to set our units and zone through the Civil 3D interface. So technically there are other ways. And then our object layers is the other big thing that we see in here. Um, now I'm not gonna be able to get this to fit all on my screen, but I will sort it by object type. And suffice it to say that whatever you see in this list has a companion in the settings tab. So it's every object type in Civil 3D, we have an opportunity to assign that directly to a layer. So we're gonna look at our alignments because uh, I have, we went out, we surveyed the center line of this road, and I'd really like that to be an actual alignment for my drawing. What this is saying is I have a base layer, C, align, center line. So those abbreviations come out too. And with this, I'm gonna add in a modifier of a suffix, and that value uh, appended to the end of our layer name is going to have an asterisk, or a dash and then an asterisk on it. So let's find out. I am going to come up to my home tab, create design panel, 
alignment from objects. Uh, this runs from west to east, like most of our alignments are supposed to. So I'll click on the west half of that line. I will confirm the components that I have. I've got a little arrow telling me in my direction. And now my alignment layer. Ah, shoot. Sorry. Too many buttons. Get back in there. So my alignment layer is just what I had said before. C align center line dash asterisk. Well, it's not gonna be finalized until I actually name this alignment. So I'll call it Primero Pass. And as soon as I fill that in, Primero Pass is now populating my alignment layer name in there. So that's what our drawing object layers are doing is they're giving us a fundamental layer and we have the option to add in additional layers on there. So, uh, and if we ever want to modify that, we can uh, click on the little layer button next to it and we'll have a chance to override, reselect our layer, modify our suffix, prefix or none, and we could remove or disremove or, or leave in, add in that modifier of the asterisk. So I'm gonna say Primera Pass, I'm gonna say, okay. I'm also just gonna draw another super quick polyline in here to sketch in that direction of traffic going the other way. I'll go to my alignment from objects. This one will run south to north. I'll call this Segundo Street. I'll say okay. And what do we think that we're going to find inside of our um, layer properties manager? Well, if I go to my C align CTLN, that's my base layer. It had, it's all, all of these settings, including a center to line type in a super fine plot style. When I created these other two objects, it created those layers for me. It made a copy of the C align center line label, and then it just added in the new name for those new opportunities. Now I do have a civil 3D style controlling how these alignments are being viewed. I go edit alignment style. We'll see I have lots of different elements, including the fact that my center line is actually not, has doesn't have anything to do with my C align CNTR or CTLN um, layer, these are all being assigned somewhere else. But I could get rid of this object one of two ways. I could visually remove it by setting its style to a no display style, or I could freeze the parent layer of this object. If I grab, that was Segundo Street, that's the north south one. If I freeze the Segundo Street layer, it's gone in the drawing. However, my labels are still there because labels are controlled a little bit differently. And with that and a question that came in, um, is there any benefit to having a layer set to zero in the general tab of our labels, such as our alignment labels or our surface labels? Absolutely. Um, that's actually how I like to have most of my labels set up, Todd. So I'm gonna come back to my survey drawing to kind of show why that's the case. So we have, all of these different points. But generally, when we're doing our survey workflows, we don't have that many label styles that we have that we need. Uh, we've got some label styles that we might want for editing. Um, so maybe we want the number, the elevation and the description, or maybe we just want no label at all. And different objects in my drawing are going to have those different situations. Um, last week, I did a webinar all about recently I did a webinar all about survey standards and description key sets and all that stuff. We don't need to get that deep, but suffice it to say, when I import this data into my drawing, I have an opportunity to assign a Kogo point with a point label style. They vary, they're different, but sometimes I want to just have that all in there. When I have my description key set, I also get to assign a layer for that object. So my water elements are going to be some shade of blue. My gas elements are going to be some sort of a red or an orange. My electricity might be yellow or it might be red. Um, whatever those are, I don't want to have to have a label style that represents each one of those different layer assignments. I just want my label to also take on the properties of my object. So uh, to go back to our bituminous example, our uh, V node dash BITM layer. Note how that is uh, coming in here is red in my properties palette and on my Kogo point. 
My style is point elevation description. This concrete though is also the point elevation description label style, but it's on a different layer and a different color and it's showing up that way. If I go and look at my label for my point elevation description, I'll see that my general tab, this is where we set our layers inside of our uh, label styles. It's in the general tab under the label collection for the layer property. What that layer zero means is it says, hey, my label is attached to an object. What layer is my Kogo point object on? Well, my Kogo point layer for my edge of concrete shot is vnode conch. My Kogo point layer for my bituminous shot is vnode bitm. So that layer zero says, take on the properties of the object that I am attached to or that my object layer lives on. If I didn't have that layer zero in front of me, I would have to create, um, could do this with a child style, but I'd have to create a point elevation description specifically associated with my V node bituminous layer. So I'll go to my V node bituminous. If I grab all three of these, we'll change that point label style to the V-Dope Petuminous. Now, my concrete is showing up as red when I really wanted it to be cyan. So uh, Todd, does that answer your question about why layer zero can be helpful uh, within our label styles? Excellent. And so that's where layer zero comes into play. Layer zero says, what layer does my object live on? And if we care about what layer our objects live on, that's why we want to pay attention to our drawing settings for our object layers. My alignment is gonna come in on C alignment center line. No matter what center line I'm talking about, they're always gonna start with my red color. They're gonna have that line type defined plot styles, yes plot, no plot, freeze thaw, whatever. That's all gonna pop, copy, populate through, and we don't have to create a million different styles, nor do we have to create um, a million different layers uh, to handle all of that label assignment. So it's kind of like um, annotative text. You know, Back in the old days in plain AutoCAD, uh, if you wanted something at 0 0.8 or at 0 0.08 paper height, you had to take all of those labels and put them on a layer for 0.08. Then if you had stuff for 0.12, you'd have to have your own layer for that. And so instead of having just one G dash annotation layer, you'd need GNO 800, GNO 1200, GNO da, 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 da. just really bloats up the file. Annotative text makes that much simpler. Layer zero in a civil 3D style also does the same for that. So uh, let's pop back into the PowerPoint. And that covers all of the main facets that I wanted to talk about today. So we talked about our uh, our civil 3D. Sorry, let me back up in my PowerPoint just to spell. So we talked about our template basics. We talked about where layers are used in civil 3D. And then we talked about the difference between style usage and layer usage. We also talked about how civil 3D uh, styles can use layer zero and also the light bulbs for no display content. But how do we manage this data? Well, if I'm looking at a civil 3D label style, I need to go into my tool space settings tab. I need to go find a particular label style. I can set my label style settings in my general tab with the layer or for my object styles, I'll find that under the display tab. Don't forget your view directions when you're going through to look at those. But I might have a, a layer in my template um, that I can't find anymore that I want. I just want to get rid of. Um, so if I wanted to get rid of the layer C major anno dash F, I can come into my layer manager and I can go run the delete layer command. However, it's telling me that I'm not able to delete that layer. Why can't I delete a particular layer? Well, zero and def points are required. Also, you should make a habit of never drafting on those layers. Uh, layer zero, as we've demonstrated, is very important for our display styles. Everything we talked about for layer zero in civil 3D object and 
label styles also applies to AutoCAD blocks. And def points is for our AutoCAD dimensions. And now we have an option to force layers not to plot. So never draft on def points anymore. It's 2021. Uh, we have different options and we can really mess up our drawings if we're adding or more importantly, deleting things from def points. Can't delete the current layer, understandable. Can't delete X refs. Of course, we'd have to go into the X ref to deal with that. The other thing is we can't delete layers that have objects on them. Uh, I remember in my early drafting days, I would often create a layer called like Z junk or something like that. And if I wanted to get rid of a layer and I couldn't delete it out of my drawing, I would just merge it into my Z junk layer and then it would you know, kind of go away. Well, that's tough. Um, and that's, that's pretty dangerous. And I realize why uh, I don't want to do that unless it's an extreme circumstance anymore. So how do I go through and understand what styles my uh, major annotation dash F is associated with? Well, really, I'd have to guess and check and build this super complicated spreadsheet uh, to go through and look at all of that. And in that case, I don't want to do that. So this is where we're going to transition to talking about the CTC Sim Manager Suite. These are productivity tools that were developed for CAD managers uh, to help you do this work more efficiently so you can get back to billing or so that you can get those really big projects done in record time and impress your friends uh, in the survey department why you were able to get that new survey template built for them so quickly. So the first tool I want to talk about in the Sim Manager suite is this tool called Template Tracker. And what Template Tracker's job is, is to who be activated. Give me a second here, folks. I need to um, get that taken care of. Likes to do this to me every time I change networks. And uh, here at ATG, we're back in the office a couple days in the week, but we're also still at home the other few days. Get those tools registered. Also, too, I'm going to go back into just my plain old template because I'm not sure what drawings have objects on them so far. So I'm going to open my survey template in this case. I'm going to run template tracker. And it's going to show us what that relationship is between a particular civil 3D layer and any styles that's a, that are associated with it. So before I was looking at my C topo annotation dashy -E dash Fs. Well, it turns out there's only one style reference that this layer is being used in. It is being used by our surface contour label style for the proposed minor type. Well, I may have been able to find that. But there are going to be other layers in your template, particularly annotation ones like this G Anno layer, that just have tons and tons of different data associated with them. So I mentioned before, oh, hey, look, we've got our 800s, our 1000s, our 1200s. If I want to get rid of all of these layers, I need to find a different uh, reference within that style. So what Template Tracker allows me to do is A, see the connection between a layer and where it's being used, but I also get to swap those references around inside my drawing. So I can take all of these general curve and line label styles, and I can tell them to use the layer Giano instead of the Giano 1200 layer. So I can now come over and swap those into my Giano layer, which now has more and more stuff in it. It's going to be really hard for me to pick those all out. But I'll go through, I'll grab all three of my 1200 layers. I'll swap those into standard Giano. And then the tool is going to tell me, hey, you have no more references for any of these 1,200 or 2,000 layers. So now I can delete them. And that's exactly what I'm going to do is I'll just grab all the, that 2,000. I'll delete that. And then to show that I don't necessarily need the tool to delete the layer, I'll grab this last one through my layer property manager, my GNO 1200P, and I'll run the delete command and away it goes. So template tracker is really great for understanding what our relationships are inside of our template. But it's not just for layers. We can also swap out our text dimension and multi-leader styles in that same fashion. So if I were to just uh, check out 
I'll get a block in here for um, demonstration sake, something with a letter or two. Uh, looks like our gate valve is going to be the successful candidate. I go into the block definition for my gate valve and look at that text. I will see that we are using the S4 text style. Well, I'll go into my annotate ribbon under my text styles and I can see that I have all of these various types inside my drawing and S4 is one of them. But what if I wanna swap those all out towards something else? Well, I'll take my ATG aerial text style. Uh, let's just change that all together too. Uh, because Comic Sans is way more professional. Actually, you know what? I'm feeling Papyrus today. Um, Papyrus does not get enough uh, smackdown on it, and we just need to put it in its place. So I'll go find my Papyrus. I will go back into Template Tracker, and we'll watch all of our S4 uh, text instances. I'm gonna take my S4, it'll say, hey, you know what? That's being used in a gas valve and in a water valve. For good measure, I will also insert my water valve. And my water shut off. So there they all are. Let's go into template tracker. Go to our textiles, I'll take my S4. I'll grab my gas and water instances and I will swap those to my ATG Aerial, which is really ATG Papyrus right now. Right and close, regen. And it went through and it basically went into block editor for every single one of those for me. Um, and that's what Template Tracker gets to do is it makes it really easy to swap all those references out. Um, another thing that we can use our AutoCAD uh, or rather this sim manager suite for is our drawing object layers and for just our general layers inside of our file itself. So um, what we can do is we can export layers from a current file. So right now I'm in my uh, survey template. So I've got 172 of these layers. So I can just kick those all out into Excel. When I'm doing that, I can say, hey, you know what? Do I want more than one drawing? Do I want other files? Um, yeah, you know what, I'm going to grab my survey or my civil template too. Don't know if that's always the best idea, but I'm going to include it anyway. Um, wherever my civil 3D profile is looking for that support file search path, it can also grab line types. So I can grab line types out of my corporate line type file. And if I'm using an STB file, which I'm personally partial to, um, we can grab those as well. So it's not just what is in your file right now it's what should be in your or it's what's available in your deployment and what can we make available to uh to our drawings as we're manipulating them so i'm going to take all this data and i'm export it out to excel where i uh will just go to today's webinar Now for this, I do like to tag that as an export versus an import. I like to give myself for a store point. This is going to open up in Excel on one of my monitors. Looks like it's the top one. And here I have a table. Um, so with this table, uh, this is you know nothing I couldn't have done copying out of Civil 3D, but I do have the opportunity to come in here and just do all of my other Excel based stuff. So um, right now this is exporting it out as a table. If for any reason that doesn't happen, you can always convert that data to a proper Excel table with a proper Excel table. We can filter checkboxes, text stuff. So I'm gonna say, you know what? I need some storm service data. So I want everything that does have STRM in the layer name. So I've got center lines, pipes, profiles, structures, and some existing. So I want to make some new layers associated with all of this. So I'll just uh, insert a couple of rows. I'll copy all this data for my pipe. And uh, I'm going to put in a dash serve SRVC and then SRVC dash wall. And that first one will be the CLIN for the center line. For my center line, I want that line type to be what do we got? We got so many different options. Um, I'm going to scroll down to my storm. 
So this, uh, this drop down right here, this is the, um, this is that data validation function of Excel, but this is what was all available in those line type files that I chose. Same thing available for my plot styles, my uh, color list, um, really all that other stuff in my drawing is giving me an option to run through all of this. So I'm just gonna assign my center line as a true object color, which in this case looks like it's about 210. Um, my pipe walls, that's great. I do want that to be continuous, but I don't want those to plot. So I'm gonna switch my plot to no, and I'm gonna switch my color to 219 as opposed to 210. Um, and I will change my plot style to also true object color. I will modify my description, uh, storm sewer pipe service. You know, really whatever it is you wanna do in here, as long as you're not putting in invalid data, stuff that doesn't exist inside your template, uh, you're good to go for all of that. So I'm gonna come back to my data tab. I'm going to clear my filter on all of that. And I'll see that I now have my two new service layers. Uh, I'll come back through here too. I'll go find my sanitary data, my SSWR. Where is it SEWR? Which one are we using in this template? I know I've got a lot of water stuff. So this water was all color 140. We're just gonna change that all to blue. Copy, drag paste. I'll save this template, clear out my data filters. And now I'm actually, I should have saved this as first, but I'll save this as to my, there's import. Go back into Civil 3D. Now that we have this template information created, I'm gonna run the create edit drawing layers command. So it's basically the opposite. Uh, this works for all four of these tools. We've got our drawing object layers in and out, our drawing layers themselves, our description keys for survey information and our figure prefix database for survey information. So when I'm importing this data, I do need to go out and find that file that I'm manipulating. Uh, webinar today, drawing import. And with that, I get to either do it in a pure sync or I can run it in just an additive fashion. Uh, I don't think I tried to delete anything. So I'm gonna do a sync. I can see that I have those two new layers. Um, those are showed up in blue. So it's saying, hey, we didn't have that layer. So those blue layers are gonna get created. I have layers that I'm updating and certain uh, information in there is gonna show up as green, which means, hey, we're just making an update. And if you ever see red in this list, it means that you're gonna have an error um, or you're bringing in data that hasn't been defined yet. Um, and it'll make the bucket, but it's probably not gonna have the behaviors that you want, but it will tell us, hey, what is, what is unchanged? What's new? What's an update? What's a delete? Did we have any duplicates? Um, and then if we can't delete something, it's got a reference. Well, that's what template tracker is for, but this tool will actually allow us to, um, to, to find those swaps right here as we're doing the import. Either way, I'm gonna go ahead and I will say, okay, and now in my layer properties manager, if I search up anything water related, those now all have that blue color instead of that 140 I was looking for earlier. If I search for my STRM layers, I'll see, I now have my sanitary services. I've got the fancy line type on the center line. My wall is set to no plot and the color was different just like I asked it to. Also updated my description for those layers. So what these tools allow you to do is to work with the table that you're gonna be working with anyway. We're gonna use, we're design professionals, we're technical professionals, we're going to be planning this stuff out in a spreadsheet no matter what. Um, so if we get to plan it in a spreadsheet, these tools allow Civil 3D to just suck that data up and then it's gonna make those changes on import it's also going to give us some quality control checks to make sure that uh, we did what we were supposed to be doing inside the software. So with that, folks, brings us to our thrilling conclusion for today's webinar. What do we learn today? 
Well, we learned that styles and layers are interwoven in a complicated way. Our civil 3D styles are really great for managing the display of complex objects, but our layers are really good for good old fashioned, hey, I have a simple object. I've got a polyline, maybe a cocoa point. I'm gonna turn that off. So I'll use the freeze command. When we use the layer zero within our civil 3D style, at least when we use it carefully, we can reduce the number of styles that we need in the template. So the example that I used today for that was our civil 3D Kogo points and our Kogo point labels. My label has the information and the dynamic data that I'm looking for. But if my Kogo point itself is placed on the correct layer, my label style has a layer zero assignment, my label is gonna take on those properties of my point that it's attempting to label. So my uh, my ground information will be the white color that it's supposed to be. My uh, sidewalk information will be cyan. My utilities will be green or orange or whatever they need to be. One label style, multiple display options. We also learned that layers are the best to use to turn off those simple civil 3D or those AutoCAD objects. But a no display style is a really great option for your complicated civil 3D objects like alignments, profiles, surfaces, and corridors. Lastly, our civil 3D drawing object layers are important for helping keep track of the parent layer of an object. If you want all of your alignments to have the same property data, but you still want independent layer control, you're gonna need to define that layer the first time, and you're gonna need to match it up inside of your drawing object layers to say, okay, my alignment center line layer, layer has the color and the plot style and the line type that I want. But if I want a new one for everything, I'm gonna have to choose the suffix modifier, and I'll need a dash asterisk to include the new name of my new object. So with that, I hope that you gained a deeper understanding of how civil 3D layers, sorry, AutoCAD layers and civil 3D styles work together inside your templates. I wanna say thank you so much for your time today. Again, my name is Kyle Groves here at ATG. My email is on screen. If you have any more questions about today's topics or any suggestions for topics in the future, definitely feel free to drop me a line. At this point, I'd like to open it up to questions. Not seeing any questions coming in yet, but uh, still have a few minutes to hang out, wait for those to come through. All right, one more call for questions before we close it out here. Uh, though I do want to say thank you again, folks, for all of your time. I uh, did see some new faces in here. Uh, so thank you for joining, and hopefully we'll see you at the next webinar. All right, team. Well, oh, hey, sorry. Uh, Matthew did uh, just saw that coming in now. So can we use this to modify our XREF layers as well? Um, Matt, did you mean the uh, the CTC tools to modify those XREF layers? Or were you just talking about the generic layer property manager? CTC tools. So. Nah, no, not really. Um, you're gonna need to do that through the traditional um, layer manager interface. So I mentioned my proposed, I've got a data reference for my surface and I have an external reference for my, um, my line work file that's coming in here. So if I open up my layer property manager, um, you are going to, well, number one for an XREF, you can't change the name of that object. So that's one reason why you're not gonna wanna use this tool for that purpose. Number two, you can't add layers or remove layers using or through the XREF interface. So if I try to delete that, 
it's going to tell me, heck no, that's an XREF layer. And if I try to create a new layer, it's going to be inside this drawing anyway. Now, if you go into the file that is your external reference and you wanted to make those changes, yes, you can export your drawing layers. Um, you can move stuff around. But once you're at a point where you're inside of a project and you already have this data existing, um, these tools are really best used almost like layer states. So if you have a series of layers and you wanted to make sure that you had CAD standards, but you're not happy with the traditional uh, layer state tools, maybe they're buggy, maybe they don't do everything you want every time you want them to do it, then you can use these tools uh, to just say, hey, I have a spreadsheet that says these are what all of my layer properties are supposed to be, my names, my colors, my styles. Um, you could import that into the sheet that would update all of your colors. And then when you go back into your other design file using that as an XREF, you'll simply go through to update your XREF um, and to restore those layer properties based off of that. Does that answer your question? Excellent. All right, anybody, any more questions? All right, folks, well, I do wanna say one more time from the bottom or the top, maybe the middle of my heart. Thank you so much for your time today. We'll catch you at the next webinar. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this one off one more time. If you do have any other questions, definitely feel free to send me that email, kgroves at atgusa.com. Don't forget to fill out the survey of today's webinar. Thank you so much. Be safe, be well.